Hi everyone, and in this video, I'll be installing the rockers, valve covers, intake, and oil pan. Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel about building a kit car and other car topics like building an LS engine. And if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below and share with others on social media. So in this last installment, I finally have my heads put onto the block and we are now going to actually add the push rods and the uh, rockers in. Now, as I mentioned before, I had one rocker that was a little bit worn. So I actually got that replaced with another used rocker to kind of match the wear of my rockers just to keep stuff balanced. You know, there's a whole process of making sure that you have everything lubed and what's going on. And so, you know, I'm just following the procedures as the book tells me and popping everything as it needs to be popped in. So there was a special sequence that you needed to do to properly get the right uh, torque on the rockers. And it was having the engine at a certain point where the valves were coming up at a certain way. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was very intricate of which, how you had to do it, get it to you know top dead center and then do it this way and then go an extra 30 degrees when you crank it. And so it was just following that uh, instruction and going straight through the whole process and doing each side. And of course, instead of just oil, we're using a special, you know, engine lube that helps when you're doing building. It's a little bit more uh, slippery. It lasts longer, stays in place, that type of thing. So when you fire up that engine for the first time, you don't have any metal on metal. You know, another you know thing to notice is as I go through this build, even though I'm always referencing the book and I'm double checking different things, uh, you do see a sort of confidence difference from, you know, the first time I'm tearing down that engine and not having a clue of what I'm doing to, you know, not necessarily knowing everything that I'm doing here, but I definitely look more comfortable. I know, you know, with all the research and all the advice and you know, the book and everything that I have in front of me, you can tell that I definitely have a clue of what's going on now and, and things are dialing in. Of course, if I'd done this again, if I do this again in the future, I will really uh, have a clue of how I want to build something, how much power I think it's going to have once I'm done, uh, you know, where it's going to go, what the look's going to be like for this type of vehicle. And then, yeah, I'll probably have to re-educate myself on the specifics. Um, to you know, do a rebuild, and I might not actually go as far as I did on this engine. I kind of wanted to purposely take this engine and go all the way and learn everything about it, and then that way in the next build, it might be a simple build where it's like, ah, just you know, replace the timing chain and the oil pump and paint it, and we're good to go and build it however I want. What you just saw there was the valve covers or the uh, valley cover uh, going in with the knock sensors and the all new wiring that I put in. And now we're getting ready to uh, get that front cover perfectly aligned. So when I put on the oil pan, it's, you know, there's no gaps, there's no oil leaks or anything like that. And so I'm just using a regular straight edge to do that. And I'm throwing on the harmonic balancer. So this is the new oil pan. Uh, if you watch my other videos, you saw that I got this pan in and then 
there was some problems with it and so I had to return it and get a new one and of course Holly was great with that and within a few days I had a new oil pan with all new parts and this one didn't have any issues and I was able to basically bolt it right back into place and, and you know finalize the, the build on the bottom end. I also picked up the proper oil filter for this uh, engine just to make sure that I'm sealing off this engine and keeping everything tight from, you know, from the outside elements. Here I'm installing the flex plate, which again was a little bit difficult, and it looks like I bailed on it because <laughs> can't get to it from the back. So now I'm adding all my sensors. Most of these sensors are brand new. Now we're going to put on the valve covers. Now as you can see, my valve covers have been taped off this whole time uh, from when I was painting. So it looks the same color, but that's actually the tape covering the valve covers because they've been uh, open. So I had it taped off and now we're getting the real valve covers, which I think look awesome. And uh, we do one final cleaning, get the gasket ready. And since these are taller valve covers, you have to put some spacers. Uh, where it bolts in because my style with the generation 3 was the four bolts down the center of the valve cover so I have to put some extensions in there get those cranked in and then you could bolt in the uh, the top cover but I just love the look of the font I love the color the powder coating on these things in fact I actually spent a lot of time trying to call up the GM factory and see if they could call up the official factory and get the official name and brand of powder coating for this uh, valve cover. And I got really nowhere with it. Um, you know, one of the guys was really helpful at GM Performance Parts, but he couldn't get anywhere with it either. And unfortunately, I didn't, while I had these off the engine, go take it down to my local shop and see match that color. And I wish I would have, because now I have to actually physically take a 500 pound unit down to a store to try to match the color. And by the time I put it in a car to do that, you know, it's too late. I needed the powder coating done before that. So maybe with some pictures and stuff like that, or maybe borrowing some samples, I could bring it to the house and, and just verify something in case I want to powder coat my firewall the same color or something like that. Uh, what you're seeing here is me just cleaning up and uh, painting up the, the bleeder tubes and uh, getting that all set for uh, installation. Uh, using a box is a great uh, way also of painting bolt heads. And so bolt heads you can poke through the box and then you can just spray the heads, which is a really nice uh, way of doing it. So now we're getting ready to put on the uh, mid-rise intake. We're finally opening the tape off of everything and kind of cleaning everything up. And, you know, this is a really cool looking intake. It's kind of vintage, but it also has a modern-ish look to it um, in the sense of kind of a flat black kind of look. I mean, it's kind of a satin, I guess. Uh, the one thing I didn't enjoy about this is that it's like a three three piece system and the way that they had the bolts laid out to where some of the flanges were you couldn't really get a wrench to actually get that bolt on and they even talk about that I think in the instructions if I'm not mistaken or at least in some of their videos about it and I was like well why don't you just redesign it so the freaking bolt fits correctly so it was a little bit difficult to put this together um, and, you know, it would be nice to just buy one piece and slap it on there, which some come that way. 
but for whatever reason, this version that I bought didn't come that way, and it was the right piece for what I wanted and the right look for what I wanted, so it is what it is. And, but, you know, I still feel that Holly makes quality parts, and uh, I just had a little run-in on this with their design philosophy. And this took a really long time for me to put together. Um, you know, we're watching this at whatever speed higher, and it was, I think, hours, if not, you know, at least two hours or something for me to put this thing all together. And it was a lot of it had to do with just trying to get to that bolt. And if you didn't get this bolt in before that one, then you weren't going to ever get the other bolt in, and you know, things like that. So, and their instructions were decent, not the best, but uh, you know, just lines and lines and lines and lines of dialogue. Now, I'm sure the reason that this is a three-part thing is so you can morph it to different things if you want, uh, which, of course, I'm not doing, but uh, it just seemed like it would have been a lot easier if it was just one or two pieces instead of all these different gaskets and different things. And You know, there's so many, I guess, points of failure uh, doing it this way that I thought it was a little over the top, but Maybe it's just the model I bought that uh, is built to morph into multiple different ways, but I'm not sure about that. Now this rope gasket that you have to put in here, you had to actually lay this rope gasket in. Uh, some people, you know, say, hey, putting a dab of grease in there helps it kind of stick because otherwise it would keep coming out of the round corners. And then it's, you know, made longer than you need and then you have to cut the place and then you have to like super glue or something, that, you know, that last piece in. And again, just give me an O-ring that fits. <laughs> like, why are you making me do all this labor? Just give me a round O-ring that I just stick in there and it goes. But, as you can see, the finished product looks pretty badass, so... If you're wondering what's in the background, that is a 2006 Lexus GS300. It's kind of a great sport slash luxury comfort ride vehicle. I enjoy it. It has the Mark Levinson sound system too, which is, uh, you know, it doesn't make a difference on the radio, but man, when you pop a CD in there, it makes all the world a difference. It's really, really, and in fact, it's the reason why none of the uh, salespeople at Lexus, they're like, you know, we we listen to the Mark Levinson stereo and we don't notice a difference. Well, it's because you're not popping a CD in because you're just listening to the radio because you're jumping between cars. But when you actually listen to the CD player, uh, it's freaking phenomenal. So what you just saw was uh, me popping in the fuel rails and uh, now we're actually bolting on the uh, throttle body. Now the throttle body I got was, uh, you know, there was a few different versions. Uh, there was like a silver blade version, there was a gold blade version. Um, a lot of research went into why get one over the other. And again, I was kind of on a budget build, so I wasn't gonna spend $400 for a throttle body. I ended up spending somewhere around $195. And, uh, for my application with my drive-by-wire, I'm pretty sure I got the uh, the gold or the bronze, uh, the bronze-looking one. Uh, I don't remember why, what the difference was. All I remember is I researched it for like 15 hours and came up with a decision and went with it, and that was it. So hopefully that works out. And after I was all said and done, I was going to try to move the engine and do something a little different with it maybe not keep that much weight up on the stand and I was gonna drop it down. 
but with the whole mid uh, mid rise intake and everything on it and that uh, load leveler wasn't really big enough for me to get around without scratching the hell out of it so I think when I go to install this engine I might have to take the intake off which would suck because it was a pain in the ass to put on and I'm not sure if I could get to the bottom bolts to pull it off again or I'm gonna have to buy a new load leveler with straps so I know I'm not just destroying and, and having to you know repaint areas of that engine so lesson learned on that one that maybe I shouldn't install the intake until after it was in the car uh, that was a mistake on my part but again never done this before just kind of going through the motions to finish the engine and seal it up and I kind of feel better that the engine is sealed up right now and, you know there's no open air gaps or anything and um, you know when I go to actually put it in the car I'm gonna have to verify that I have you know some of the plugs and stuff, stuff like that is 100% solid. Well that's it for today. Until next time, have a great day.